Back in 2012, years before Russian meddling in U.S. elections dominated headlines, Ohio Democratic Party Chairman David Pepper began writing a novel about a foreign country's attempts to influence the outcome of an American election. That book, The People's House, was released in August 2016. Now he's out with a second book, The Wingman, which picks up where The People's House left off. Judy spoke with him recently and asked him how a politician came to write political thrillers. It was after an election cycle where I hadn't won and I had, uh, I just sort of had this urging to, to try and tell a good political story and I just started writing and I just kept writing. So it um, was not something I had planned on doing and I had not done creative writing before, but it was a, a nice outlet for me. And I also have always thought that there's not a lot of movies out there or books that really capture the day-to-day -day reality of politics. A lot of the most famous ones to someone who knows a lot are really unrealistic. So my goal was to tell a political story that was really based on how things really work. So uh, this, your first book, The People's House, comes out in 2016. Right. And it's all about the Russians trying to and succeeding in turning uh, a, a congressional election, right. midterm elections. Right. You didn't have an inkling that something like that was going to happen? No, you know, I didn't. I, I, I put it to bed in the summer, and then I got it out there, and later on people started writing me after they'd read it, like, my gosh, your story keeps coming true. But I didn't write it to predict anything. My goal was to really capture some of the deepest problems in our system, you know, things like you know, gerrymandering, things like weak political systems. And I happened to have worked in Russia years ago, and so I had this Russian oligarch who plays the role. But, but my goal was actually to expose through a, through a thriller a lot of the deepest problems in our political system that do make us vulnerable to this type of interference. And so I think by trying to be very realistic in the plot, I ended up capturing, obviously, what ultimately ended up happening to some degree. You sure did, and it's it's turned a lot of heads. And then the second book, which uh, we're showing here, The Wingman, um, is is basically a follow-on to that, yeah. where the Russians uh, try even greater mischief and uh, get away with a lot of it. The second book really gets into the role of dark money, and it tries to show the kind of um, mischief you can cause that dark money allows you to do, for the most part, legally. And so it's another plot that I think, frankly, will feel parallel to some of the things that are happening today uh, because it, again, tries to capture some of the weaknesses in our system and what they allow for in our, in our campaigns and elections. So the things that you portray in these books, you think a lot of that could really happen? Yeah, so the, the, when my first book was finished, the first readers, before it ultimately started to look like reality, would say to me, your book really scared me because it felt so real. Do you really think this could happen? And so there's some dramatic license in these books. Sure. But my, my point in the end was to actually capture the political system as it currently exists, capture the laws that exist, and show that, yes, you know, again, there's a little more drama in the books than probably real life, but to show that, that, the, that what we've allowed to get into our political systems, dark money, Right. Gerrymandering. And by dark money, remind us. Dark money is the ability to spend money that is right. not disclosed, often through nonprofits that are perfectly legal. That we have, by the way, the hyper partisan environment that, that basically has some people, you know, not wanting to crack down on things because it may help them. That all of these add up to a huge weakness that, as I show in the first book, and as we're seeing, other countries can see that maybe we don't see as clearly as they do, and all of a sudden, those weaknesses add up to really opening up pretty dark possibilities in our election cycles. So you see a lot of these dark possibilities, and yet you continue to work in politics. Yeah. And that's your, your day job. Yeah, I'm very passionate about politics, yeah. and, and I, if, if, if you watch me closely in politics, uh, in addition to writing these books about these issues, I'm very passionate about ending gerrymandering. And one thing we're very proud of in Ohio in the last couple of years, we have put measures forward and worked with, frankly, both sides and a lot of citizen groups to try and end gerrymandering in Ohio. So, yeah, I, I stay involved, but I would call myself a reformer. But if someone wants to kind of get some hints about the things I'm most passionate about, it's some of the central aspects of these books. Well, wearing, with, with your day job hat on, right. the director of the Ohio Democratic Party, let me just ask you a couple of questions about that. How much do you think Ohio voters care, are interested in, the Russia investigation, which is getting so much attention here in Washington. So interestingly, given I, that I wrote these books, I think they care, 
But I don't think that's the winning message of candidates this year. I think to respond to everything Trump does every day and only be anti-Trump, to talk about Russia and Comey all day, I actually think that is a trap. And if, if Democratic candidates get caught up on that every day, I actually think they will not do as well in elections as if they stay disciplined and focused on, on the kind of issues that people worry about every day around the kitchen table. David Pepper, the chair of the Democratic Party in the state of Ohio and the, the author of two political thrillers. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Great to be here.